What's up YouTube? This is All Day Tech here with another video part 2 on how to make a calculator using C++ and Qt. So at the end of this video we're going to be able to enter all the digits 0 through 9. So let's get started. So at the end of the first video we should have this user interface with um, the buttons that don't yet work. That's alright, we're going to implement them right now. So we'll start off by making uh, giving all these uh, push buttons more descriptive names. So name it clear, plus minus, percent, divide. And we're doing this um, to make these, we're going to be using these variable names in our code uh, so we want to make it more readable and uh, easier to write uh, by by giving them more descriptive names so we'll say oops say add equals and then for these digits we'll go 0 through 9 and you can see that uh, Looks like 6 and 9 both have each other's name, so we can't change this to a 6. We'll just change it to a 60 right now. Um, since the 9 is already a 6, now we can change the 9 to a 9, and we'll change the 6 to the 6. And then it looks like 7, 8, and 9 are already named appropriately. Alright, so now let's go back into edit mode and go to the main window.h file. Here we'll define a private slot and we'll call it we'll return void and we'll call it push button. Uh, we'll call it digit pressed. All right, and a slot is just a piece of code that uh, basically a function that executes when a signal is emitted. Um, QT works with signals and slots. So that's a pretty big concept um, seen in QT. Uh, so if you're not familiar with that yet, um, just Google QT signals and slots, and um, there's plenty of information on that. So now we'll uh, define the function definition. Alright, that'll be our function definition right there. And now we'll need to associate a uh, button press with uh, calling this function, this slot. So to do that, we'll use the connect function. And we'll pass it UI push button zero first. Um, so UI is just a pointer to our user interface. So all of our uh, buttons and labels. Um, can be accessed through that UI pointer. Um, so we'll get push button zero to start with. And we'll connect it to the signal released. So when the button is released, it will emit a signal and call a slot associated with this object. And we'll define that slot to be our slot that we um, just created, digit pressed. And then you want to do this for all the push buttons 0 through 9. Alright, so we have all the buttons connected. Um, so now just to test it, we'll um, 
include QDebug. And if you aren't familiar with QDebug, it's basically a replacement for C out. In this QT environment, um, you can try using C out, but you won't see the printout anywhere. To get the uh, printout, like a C out statement, um, just include the QDebug library and uh, call this QDebug function. So now whenever we press a button, you can see test is printed down here. Alright, so it looks like they connected successfully. So now we're going to get rid of the QD bug. Alright, so now we need some way to figure out what button was pressed when this um, when this function is executed. Uh, so to do that, we'll, uh, sender will uh, return a pointer, as you can see, a pointer to a Q object. Um, in this case, we know it's going to be a Q push button that is sending uh, the signal. So we'll say So sender is going to return a pointer to our to a Q push button. So we'll declare a variable to store that in, and then we'll also need to cast the result of sender to Q push button uh, pointer. All right, so that'll get the button that sends the signal. So now we can call. Uh, we can set the label text according to the button that was pressed. And we didn't change the uh, label name at the top, so we just left it as label. You can use the set text method to change the label text. And then we'll get the text from the button like that. So let's try that. All right, you can see it's working, but it's replacing the entire uh, number with the last digit pressed. And that's not what we want. We want it to append the digits. So let's implement that. So we're going to want to read in the, um, the current number from the labels uh, into a variable. So we'll declare a variable of type double. We'll call it label number. And uh, we'll uh, set the label number equal to UI label text plus uh, the button text. Um, so these are just strings that we're uh, concatenating. And then we'll convert that to double. That's a method uh, built into the Q string type. All right. And then we'll set the text to our, um, not quite actually. Uh, we can't set the text to a variable of type double. So once we uh, add that to the end of our label. We're going to want to convert it back to a Q string. So we'll need a Q string variable for that. And Q string has a static method. That means you can call it um, just with the uh, type um, and the scope resolution operator. And that method is called number. And we can just pass it the Q string uh, label number, um, the double label number, and it will convert it to a Q string. 
and then we can set the label text to our new label. So let's try that. Alright, that looks like it's working. Although you see after one, two, three, four, five, six digits, um we we only have six digits of precision. Um we can change that. The Q string type um has another method. You can see when I type the comma. Um you can also speci specify uh, uh the uh, uh type the uh the the way that the uh, double will be um, displayed. Uh, so we'll leave that as G as the default, but the precision is only 6 right now. Um, we'll make that 15. Most computers can handle 15 digits for double precision. So we'll do that. Um, and that middle, this G, uh, you can look up. QT has a nice uh, description of the different options here on the QString uh, data type page for QT. Um, so you can go check that out. It just dis uh, discusses how um, the number will be displayed with an exponent, stuff like that. But we won't worry about that too much right now. All right, so let's run that. Alright, that was 15 digits, so you can see we increased the precision. Uh, we can enter a lot more digits now, and if we enter one more, it's going to uh, display it as an exponential. Alright, pretty good. Um, that'll do it for this video, guys. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you in the next video.